I'm back again. I'm going to read you chapter 11 now. It's called Wedding Presents. The villa had become rather gloomy that morning. Outside, people were rushing past on their way to the Circus Maximus for the race. They were chatting and yelling at each other. Up the blues! Blue is the best! You've got to be joking! Blues don't have a clue! You know these other fellows! And so on. But everyone in the villa now knew that Scorcher was in prison, thanks to the ghastlies, Crabius and Septicemia. Perilous was a nervous wreck, trying to keep himself up from his Scorcher in per um, it's trying to big himself up, sorry, for his Scorcher impersonation. Chrysius was going round, banging his fists against his skull, as if some dreadful problem was coiling himself round him like a monstrous python. As for Flavia and Hysteria, they were clutching at each other and sobbing wildly over Scorcher's fate. I shall never see him again, Hysteria wailed. I shall wither away and die from a broken heart. And so on. Die from broken heart? Unlikely, I thought. She'd drown in her own tears first. I was about to point this out when I happened to notice Maddus Bananas across the road. I was in fact at that moment very busy at my morning preening and had my head stuffed halfway up my left wing pit. That's armpit in human terms. I just thought, I just caught sight of Maddus Bananas as he went across the yard towards Treddia's house dragging some strange bit of wooden machinery with him. This definitely required investigation. So I flapped over to see what was going on. It's my latest invention, Madis Banana said, his face um, reefed in smiles. I've made it for Trendia. It's a sewing machine. Really? A sewing machine? What does it do? Well, well it sews, Madis Bananas told me. Hmm. I fixed the invention. The, I fixed the inventor with the most glittering, piercing eyes. That's the left one, by the way. And told him that somehow I had already managed to work that bit out since the clue was in its name. Ark, I required. Ergo, I required to know more. Oh, he said. Well, at the moment, Trendia does all her stitching by hand. It takes a long, long time. The machine will stitch things faster, 20 times faster, the cloth goes in here, the thread passes through this needle, Trendia turns this handle and the needle goes up and down, putting the thread in the, in the material. It's my brilliant idea and it's going to make me a fortune. But now I'm giving it to Trendia and she will be my uh, be so impressed. She'll fall in madly in love with me and we'll get married, live happy ever after while I make sewing machines for the rest of the world. Of course, I should have worked it out before. Madis Bananas was probably the only person, apart from the Ghastlies, who liked the idea of Scorcher going to jail, because if Scorcher was in jail, he wouldn't be a rival for Trendia's attention. I couldn't blame Madis Bananas for taking advantage of Scorcher not being here. I would have done the same myself. Ha ha ha. However, I wanted to see what Trendia would do with this amazing machine, so I went along with the inventor. Trendy answered her door, looking both shocked and worried. They've got Scorcher in jail, she told us breathlessly. Yes, began Madis Bananas, rather too excitedly, but I thought you were sewing machine. Poor Scorcher, do you think he'll be all right? Trendy wasn't even looking at Madis Bananas. It makes clothes much more quickly, persisted the desperate inventor, with rather less excitement. What will he have to eat in jail? Has anyone taken some food for him? Trendy wrung her, wrung her hands. Perhaps I could stuff a dormouse for him. Do you think he likes stuffed dormice? Yuck. It's a sewing machine, Maddis Bananas repeated, and, and excitement had now turned into desperation. It sews. It will help you. I made it for you. I don't think they have any washing facilities in jail. Poor Scorcher. He'll start getting smelly if he doesn't wash. I'll stuff a dormouse and take some soap as well. <coughs> Maddus Bananas pecked up, uh, perked up. Actually, we haven't invented soap yet, he pointed out. At last, Trendia looked at Maddus Bananas and I was astonished. Trendia began to blush. Oh, I thought, there is more to this than I realise. I'm becoming to think that maybe Trendia likes Maddus Bananas. She's just so shy, she doesn't know what to do about it. Ah, poor things. Tuck, tuck, tuck. 
I wonder if there was anything I could do to help. And for a moment, I considered giving both of them some biscuits I had stashed away or a bit of dead squirrel to share. But in the end, I decided it was inappropriate. Wedding presents could come later. Now that he had trained his attention, Madis Bananas began explaining his wonderful invention to her all over again. Her eyes lit up, lit up at last. For me, she exclaimed. It was Madis Bananas' turn to blush and he did like a blooming rose. Sweet. He pulled the machine into Trendy's house and showed her how to thread the needle and where to put the dress she was making. It will get it done in no time, Madis Bananas declared proudly. Just turn the handle slowly at first, then faster. Trendia did as she was told and soon the dress was whizzing through the machine and the needle was going up and down so fast my eyes couldn't catch it any longer. Amazing! There it was, the dress was finished, stitched in a flash. <gasps> it's brilliant, declared Trendia, jumping up and jumping up and planting a kiss on Mad Madis Bonanza's surprised and delighted cheek. She pulled the new dress from the machine, held it up and, oh dear, the whole thing fell apart. Hmm, I muttered. I'm not sure anyone would want to wear that. Madis Banana's face turned to as white as a toga. No, why, why? Trendy was looking at the two pieces of material. They're only stitched on one side, she said, giving the inventor a quizzical glaze. So, uh, so I don't understand Madis Banana's answer. Trendy had giggled. You don't know much about sewing, do you? You have to have stitches on both sides. Otherwise the thread comes out. The thread goes through the material, turns around and comes back out from the other hole. Your machine puts the thread in the material and then takes it straight back out. So it doesn't stay in there and, and hold everything together. Mad as Bananas was blushing again. But this time it wasn't because he was so, emba it, he was so embarrassed. It, it, this time it was because he was so embarrassed poor man once again his invention had failed and he'd let himself down Trendia laid a hand on his arm it's all right she said softly it was a lovely kind and uh, a lovely idea and so kind of you to make it for me i'm such an idiot Madis bananas gave the sewing machine a mighty kick ow he staggered back into the yard and hopped away back to his inventing room I was about to say something to Trendia about Malice Bananas being such a nice chap and quite handsome in an odd kind of way when I became aware of a lot of noise coming from the villa. So I left Trendia staring at the useless sewing machine and flat back across the road trying to avoid the chanting crowds ahead and heading, the chanting crowd heading for the Circus Maximus. Flavia was in a panic, rushing from room to room with Fusia and Flippers Floppers trailing after her, and they were all shouting the same thing. Paris! That was Flavia. Paris! That was Flippers Floppers. Paris! That was Fusia. See, I told you they were all shouting the same thing. What do you mean? You knew that without being told. I am telling you, I said it like that for effect. Don't you know anything about storytelling? Obviously not. But. We must hurry on because Tempest is forgetting all over the place now. Remember that one? I do hope so. Perilous had completely disappeared from the villa and only I knew where he'd gone and I'm not telling. Ha ha. Give us a biscuit. Crack. Okay. And that's that chapter over and done with. I think it's two more and then we are finished. Enjoy.